Hello again. Today we're going to take on another one of our science activities talking about air pressure. So let's see what we're going to be doing. So we're going to read the text titled air pressure, then analyze the weather data in the chart provided and answer the follow-up questions. You may record your answers to the follow-up questions on notebook paper if you don't have enough room on the sheet provided. Okay, so let's get, let's take a look at our um, there we go. Air pressure. All right, this is in your packet. So just follow along as I read. All right. Air pressure. Wave your hands around. Feel anything? That's not just empty space you're touching. You've just touched billions of pieces of air. Those pieces are called molecules. Air is made up of molecules of different gases, including molecules of water. All those molecules weigh something. The force caused by the weight of air pushing on things is called air pressure. You might find it hard to believe, but there are about 500 pounds of air pushing down on top of your head right now. You don't notice it because your body's used to it. Blow up a balloon and think about what's going on in the balloon and in your lungs. Now let go of the balloon's neck. What happened? First, you filled your lungs with air. Then you squeezed your lungs to push the air into the balloon. The balloon filled with air. To do this, you had to increase the air pressure both in your lungs and into the balloon. When you let go of the balloon neck, the air rushed out. Why to do that? Air flows from areas of high pressure to low pressure until the two are balanced. This is an important thing to know. Remember from our thunderstorms activity, nature likes a nice balance. Another thing to know is that hot air takes up, most, or takes up more space than cold air and is therefore lighter and rises up above colder air. That's how hot air balloons can fly. But how does all this whooshing air relate to the weather? All right, and here we're getting into air pressure. Air pressure, wind, and weather. Air is always moving in the atmosphere. You can see clouds flowing by. You can feel the wind blowing. Air moves because of differences in air pressure and temperature. The wind blows from areas of high pressure, in this case high means a lot or heavier pressure, towards areas of low pressure or less pressure. Warm air rises up and cool air sinks towards the ground. Add some water to all this air movement and you've got lots of different kinds of weather. So high means dry. Areas of high pressure bring dry, happy weather. Low, oh no. Areas of low pressure bring cloudy, wet, and lousy weather. So L, low, lousy. High, dry, high, H, happy. There you go. All right, wet or dry. Air near the Earth's surface gets warmed up by the sun. This warm air gradually gathers moisture from oceans, lakes, and rivers, as well as from trees and other plants. Warm air can hold a lot of moisture. In areas marked L for low pressure on weather maps, the warm humid air is rising slowly and cooling as it rises. The air's moisture then condenses as water droplets to form clouds, which can bring rain or snow. In areas marked H for high pressure on weather maps, Cool air is gently falling down through the atmosphere. Cool air can't hold as much moisture as hot air. This air brings clear skies because the air is so dry. Barometers are instruments that measure air pressure. When you hear a weather reporter say the barometer is rising, it means that a high pressure system is on the way. The weather will be nice. If you hear the barometer is falling, get set for precipitation because an area of low pressure is about to surround you. All right, now wet is wonderful. Sometimes rain is a pain, but for farmers, rain is a good thing. From time to time, weather patterns change and not enough rain falls. When that happens, we have a drought. Droughts can make life difficult for many people. No rain means no crops, and that means very little food. Think about how your life would be affected if farmers cannot grow their crops or feed their livestock. All right, and here you go. Build a simple barometer. This is super cool. All you're going to need, you're going to need a plastic cup or an empty can an 11 inch round balloon, scissors, a rubber band, piece of tape, wood skewer or long straw with the end snipped off to form a pointer. It's like a toothpick looking thing. A strip of cardboard and a pen to mark readings. Now what you're gonna do, step one, blow up the balloon, then deflate it. This makes it easier to slip over the mouth of the cup or can. Cut off the neck, of, cut off the neck and secure it with a rubber band to prevent air from seeping in. Step two, tape a long skewer to the center of the balloon as shown. There you go. 
Step three, on a strip of cardboard, make several horizontal lines or simply mark high and low. And step four, note the current weather. You might check with NOAA.gov for your area's current pressure. Mark the scale where your skewer is pointing, record the date and weather outside, all right? And it's gonna move with the different air pressure, okay? That's super cool. All right, so here is the chart that we wanna look at. Now there's only two questions to go along with it. So all you're gonna do is study the weekly weather forecast shown right here. This is, nah. there we go. Then answer the questions below. You may use additional sheet of paper to answer the questions if you need to, okay? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's one whole week. All right, one whole week. All right, notice the high and low temperatures, the expected cloud cover, and the precipitation rain chances for each day. What trends or patterns do you notice? Record your observations below. Okay, so you're gonna record your observations right there. If you run out of room, use a different sheet of paper. And then question two, think about what you've learned about air pressure. Use the weather chart above, right here, again, to describe the changes in air pressure that are likely taking place throughout the week. Explain your thinking. Yeah, how do you know? Explain your thinking means how do you know? Okay, so that is the last activity you're going to see me working on. And you're gonna, you're gonna see a lot more from Miss Eddie, Miss Portia, Miss Foster. And don't forget, try your best, have some fun, and stay safe. Don't forget to wash your hands. All right, be talking to you guys soon. See you.